Hey everyone, Rodolfo here. So Apple just announced their back to school promotion for this year. And with the releases at WWDC, I think the Mac lineup for 2023 is complete. So I thought it might be helpful to do a video on what would be the best Macs for students to get before college starts and make the most of that back to school promotion. So as we all know, usually students don't have a lot of money to burn. So we'll be looking not at the best Macs, but at the best trade-offs that will give you a solid machine that will last you for years without spending too much. And for that, we'll cap our budget at $1,500 Macs. Unfortunately, the cheapest Mac that Apple sells, which is a really great machine, won't be an option for us here today either. And I'm obviously talking about the Mac Mini. And the reason why it's not going to be an option is because it's a desktop. We are buying your one and only Mac here, and it needs to be something that you can take to class, you can take to the library, study groups, and even take home for the holidays to work on assignments, if that's the case. So we'll be only looking at laptops here today. So the back to school promotion is basically a $150 gift card when you buy a Mac and 20% off of Apple Care if you decide to get Apple Care. The discounted Apple Care can be used on the purchase of this Mac if you decide to get Apple Care for it, but the gift card cannot. First you get the Mac, then they are going to give you the $150 gift card and then you can use that on the purchase of an AirPods or anything else later on. But you can't apply the gift card to the purchase of the Mac that's giving you the gift card. So with all of that said, let's go to the site and take a look at the Mac options. So the first thing that you want to do when you go into Apple's website is instead of trying to look for your Mac here, go all the way down and look for the education store Shop for College. Now that alone is going to apply a 5 to 10% discount on the regular price and it's going to help us stay under that $1,500 budget. Now the first and cheapest option that we'll be looking at is the MacBook Air and it's still a great machine with great performance. Now what you should not do however is buy the base version with 8 gigs of RAM and even the 256 gigs of SSD. The RAM is definitely the most important thing though, because once that's set, it's set. You can't do anything about it. The 256 gigs of SSD is probably gonna run out fast and you're gonna need to get external drives and carry external drives around with you. But at least you have that option if you decide to get the 256 instead of 512 and add more storage, external storage later. Now a net one MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 of SSD will cost you $1259. And if you decide to forego the SSD upgrade, that's $180. It would go down to $1079. But I really do recommend this upgrade. Next we have the M2 MacBook Air, and that comes with two GPU options. You have a 8-core GPU option and a 10-core GPU option. If you decide to go for the lower GPU with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 of SSD, that will cost you $1379 and $1179 for the version with 256. If you do, however, decide to upgrade the GPU, that's going to cost $100 more and you're going to be looking at $1479 or $1279. Now, the $100 difference for the GPU upgrade is worth it, but not really necessary. If you are going to do any kind of visual work where the two extra cores are going to help you and you have an extra $100 to spend, then go for it. But if you're going to law school or something like that, where you're going to be working with pages or Word documents all day, then save the money. Also, if you're deciding whether to get the M2 MacBook Air without the SSD upgrade or the M1 MacBook Air with the SSD upgrade, get the M1. I think that the speed difference that you're going to get with the M2 is not worth the storage difference of 256 gigs. Now, if you want a screen that's a little bigger, Apple just announced their 15-inch MacBook Air, 
And this one comes only with the 10 core GPU. But if you decide to get that with the RAM upgrade and SSD upgrade, that's gonna be 1579. So it's a little bit higher than our budget that we set out for, but not by much. And if you do want the bigger screen and you have the extra $80, then go for it. And the 15 inch MacBook Air without the SSD upgrade would be 1379. But again, if you're picking between the 13 or 15 inch M2 MacBook Air and you're deciding whether to get the SSD upgrade for the 13 inch or the 15 inch without the SSD upgrade, I would forego the bigger screen and get the SSD upgrade because I think that's gonna be a better bang for your buck. Now, the reason why I didn't talk about the 13 inch MacBook Pro with M2 is because that's a terrible computer when compared to the Air and you should just not get that computer ever, period. The 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M2 Pro or M2 Max are great computers, but the reason why I didn't include those here either was because the cheapest one is 1849 and that's well over our budget. Also, I work full-time as an iOS developer and edit these videos on an M1 Mac Mini, which is a super great computer, super fast, I have no complaints about it. So I don't think that you need the Pro or Max chips as a student. If you're worried, however, that the regular M1 or M2 won't be enough for you because you're majoring in something that requires 3D modeling or any other type of GPU intensive work, then maybe consider the 14 inch M1 Pro or M1 Max on the Apple refurbished site or new on Amazon. Just don't buy the refurbished or renewed on Amazon. These computers are still faster and they have more GPUs than the regular M2 and they cost considerably less than the new line of M2 Pro and M2 Max computers. So I hope these tips were helpful. If they were, consider subscribing to get more content like this. And let me know, are you planning to buy a Mac for college? Which one? Tell me down below in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.